Hello everybody, welcome back to a brand new episode of our F123 driver career mode. Hope you're all having a great day. I spent some Bitcoin on a new helmet here, but we're ready for race number two of our rookie season. Unfortunately, we had all four upgrades fail on us, so we are coming into this weekend here in Jetta with absolutely nothing upgraded on this Alpha Tori now after a P16 finish. You see us touching down in the Jetta area here in Saudi Arabia. But yeah, we're coming into this weekend. Uh, no upgrades off of that 16th place result in Bahrain now that we actually finished I think it was what 14th but with the red flag bug that we have currently in F123 it put us down to the 16th position. Carlos Sainz, instead of second, loses his podium, uh, unfortunately, because of that red flag bug. So, red flags I have turned off completely, and we will have them back once the game has them fixed here. And, as well, I will put them probably on reduce, because I don't want them coming out, you know, every other Grand Prix. I only want to see it maybe once or twice a season. However, uh, getting, you know, acclimated with this brand new Jetta circuit. Watch this. It is so different now here in Jetta. You're going to see right here. Look at these curbs. They are such a new and unique challenge and you can see I myself paid the price right off the bat for abusing the curb so I was having to completely relearn this circuit to be honest it's honestly a completely different circuit now uh, and you can see myself struggling to get up to grips and, and speed but you're trying to get the car right here to hook up as much as you can and there was a decent example of it hooking up for once now uh, but yeah I'm really digging the track changes here in Jeddah you got a little bit more space to work with uh, in certain parts of the circuit as well they've definitely moved the walls back uh, so yeah, I was pretty uh, happy with the pace in the car here. Wasn't quite sure what to expect. I noticed the Alpha Tori last episode in Bahrain, we had a lot more pace in qualifying than we did in the Grand Prix. I was a little bit scared that we were going to see the same thing again because we haven't brought any upgrade packages ready to go into qualifying. Gary, how are you feeling coming into quali here tonight? Yeah, yeah, honestly, I think pretty good. I think we can have a shot at Q2 tonight if we can just, you know, have a good driver in the car. You hear myself with one of the pit lane reporters. We actually had a lubrication uh, system fault there, so we had to wait to go back out on track. But we eventually got out on circuit. So I did find out, by the way, it's not a bug that the OSD is not changed in practice and qualifying. A commenter in the Bahrain episode saved my life and told me, uh, basically, there's different layout options for different sessions, practice, qualifying, and race. I never noticed that, so thank you. Uh, in the next episode in Australia, you will see the OSD uh, back to the way it is for the race for all sessions now completing my first lap though here in q1 we were slowest we were dead last behind our good friend of logan Sargent. so obviously having to go out and make a second attempt here late in this session our teammate of yuki sonoda uh currently looking like he's going to repeat what he did in bahrain and go through into q2 while i'm struggling here in the background we do get a tent in the first couple of corners and we have Lance stroll right in front of us now one of the positives here i was finally getting the car to hook up lucky to hook up right there we gained some uh good time but i was getting a nice pull as well from Lance Stroll with the slipstream that he was giving me and I finally nailing my marks here for the first time this weekend I'm gonna gain two to three tenths of a second down this straightaway right here because of Stroll's slipstream and it was starting to look like Stroll might be in actually in trouble in the Aston Martin he's down to P17 as we're headed to the line we're gonna see because I'm closed in on him on this lab here we go to the line with the DRS enabled across the stripe and we will make it into Q2 I don't think Lance Stroll did. P14 is what we get. And Yuki Sonoda, our teammate, is out. Stroll is out in shocking f uh, fashion. But the two to three tenths we gained on the straightaway from Stroll's slipstream is what moved us through into Q2 over our teammate of Yuki Sonoda. Uh, so here we are in Q2 now, late in this session. I wasn't expecting much here. Putting down, you know, a, a decent lap here, but it wasn't great. You're going to see myself struggling a little bit there, but getting that car to finally hook up through this section, but I ran over uh, the curb pretty heavy right there. So uh, it was a decent lap, but it wasn't great, and I was you know, exiting this final hairpin, expecting a 15th place effort in. That's exactly what it would be behind Alex Salbon in the Williams. P15 here in Q2 is where we will start this Saudi Arabian Grand Prix here in Jeddah. Honestly, though, a big improvement from what we did in the last episode in Bahrain. It's all about improvement here as a driver early on in this first season of our career mode. So I'm ready to head to the grid here and kick off this Grand Prix in Jeddah. today on the shores of the Red Sea in the lower Hejaz Mountains to visit one of the newest circuits on the Formula One calendar. We're in Jeddah, home to what we all hope is going to be a thrilling Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. 
So let's take a look at the topographical map of the Jeddah Street Circuit. As you can see, a number of challenging corners for the drivers to master here. We'll see just how much the teams have benefited from their time spent in practice this weekend. And like many street circuits, this track has the potential to punish drivers that get it wrong. Let's hope we avoid any safety cars today. So with the race not far away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. Max Verstappen put in a fantastic lap yesterday and he'll start from pole position. And it's Charles Leclerc in P2. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Sainz, Perez, Russell, Hamilton, Fernando Alonso, Bottas, Ocon, Gasly, Magnussen, Joe, Albon, Golden Boy, Sonoda, Stroll, Norris, Hulkenberg, Oscar Piastri and Logan Sargent. Which of these talented drivers will come out on top today? Anthony Davidson is with me once again to take you through today's action. And we have plenty of twists and turns to come over the next hour or so, I'm sure. Now, can I get your take on Max Verstappen? Well, it was a really impressive lap in qualifying to get pole position. But are they going to be able to hold on to the lead into the first corner with so many quick starters around them? And let's see who's able to keep their tyres in that temperature sweet spot early on. You've got a great tyre warmer underneath your right foot and the drivers need to make the most of that on the formation lap, lest they see themselves skating wide at turn one on cold rubber. Ready to go racing here now from Jeddah under the lights for the second net race in a row here now as we've also added two night races this season with Qatar as well as Las Vegas. You see some mixed strategies, softs and mediums. We're going on softs. Our teammate of you, Sonoda, he's starting on the medium. So two different strategies here for us. Let's see which one works out the best as we are ready to go racing here. Let's kick off the formation lap here in Saudi Arabia. The formation lap gets underway here in Saudi Arabia and every driver will be looking to settle in for the race ahead, making sure their car's ready for the battle and as the lights go out. We're almost ready to start the race as the cars take their positions on the grid, with the drivers and teams making their final preparations. All right, team, just want to say thanks for the hard work this weekend. I'm feeling pretty confident about tonight. Yep, I agree, mate. Car looks good. Just remember, we struggled as a team on race pace in Bahrain. Martin, is this a track you would have fancied racing at back in the day? Oh, 100% crofty. This is a track that tests each driver. We as drivers love that. All right, it's time to race. Let's see how the rookies of Owen, Piastri and Sargent get on tonight. You hear our team communications, you hear Crofty Brundle up in the booth now as we are ready to go racing and yeah, let's pay attention to us rookies here, three of us in the field this season, we're ready to go racing now in Jetta. Max Verstappen from pole position, he's going to immediately go over to the left side, try to cover off the Ferrari in the background, George Russell P3, Perez fourth, Hamilton fifth, Leclerc holds on to second place and Verstappen, more importantly for him, after winning in Bahrain last episode, covers off Leclerc there and holds on to that lead position now. Uh, as he gets his first poll of the season. I am keeping track of all driver stats in this career mode. Verstappen just picked up his 21st poll. So obviously the stats went up to the end of 2022. And then we take over from there. So Verstappen right now coming in to do, uh, tonight. With 36 wins in his Formula 1 career after Bahrain. Now as you can see him leading through this sweeping left-hander. Now such a tricky but unique corner. But a fun corner that one is specifically now. But everyone's settling in right off the bat there. Lewis Hamilton putting a little bit of pressure on the back of Sergio Perez, uh, the pole winner actually back in Bahrain. Couldn't quite pull off the victory, of course. He would love to, of course, go to the top step of the podium here today like he did in real life in 2023. Could we repeat history with a Verstappen Perez first two race wins of the season? Let's wait and see. Of course, now you see Valtteri Bottas holding off Carlos Sainz. A little bit of side-by-side -side action in the background there. You can see that we got the two Alpines of Gasly as well as Esteban Ocon uh, gearbox, front wing to gearbox here as we head down towards that final hairpin. What a sight in the background there. A beautiful uh, view as Hamilton briefly trying to attack Perez but didn't have enough for him. The Alpines as well got side by side. I myself lost some ground on this opening lap here. I was down to P17 and I'm going to show you guys a replay of, well, 
why I'm down NP17 after the opening lap here in Jeddah. So it was not a terrible start, but look at Yuki Sonoda. He's absolutely flying up the middle. He goes and passes like three cars in just a few moments there and goes up the inside of Zhou Guan Yu. He was three wide. I think I was I was definitely three wide here uh, through turn one. Stroll, of course, getting the elbows out a little bit on those mediums, but it seemed like the mediums had a better start than the softs. But yeah, we would settle down into P17, unfortunately, here as we had some battles happening all over the circuit now. Max Verstappen, Charles Leclerc going at it here for the lead. And you can see right there Verstappen really not giving it Leclerc a lot of room to work with, but has the preferred lane, has more grip right there. He holds on uh, to P1. Perez had actually gotten up into third position. Or sorry, he was already in third position. So, uh, but you see myself here holding on to P17. Nico Hulkenberg, though, closing in on the back of me really quickly in that Haas, and I'm trying to save some battery. We don't have a lot of battery, and it, it wears pretty quick early on uh, with the R&D of this Alfa Tori, so I end up just kind of giving him the position here, settling in right now. So, yeah, not the, the start we're looking for here, and Jetta down to the 18th position. It's the three rookies at the bottom of the grid. Is I'm actually going to launch one back up the inside of Hulkenberg there in the turn one. He was a little bit cautious into the corner, so I said, you know what? I'm going to get the elbows out. I'm a rookie. I want to show that we belong in Formula 1 and get going here uh, and, and try to take that P17 back from Hulkenberg, which we would do. Now, Mark would actually come over the radio a few moments later and tell me that he was having a mechanical problem, so he was going to be a bit slow. Look at the DRS difference now as Leclerc has that DRS enabled. He's going around the outside of Max Verstappen into that final turn. Close quarters racing right there. Perez licking his chops. He loves what he sees and he is all over the back of Max Verstappen as we head down this run straight away. Where's Perez gonna go? He has a run. He's gonna go on the inside. Verstappen, no DRS. Perez might do a two-for-one special as we head down into turn one and here he goes. He's now in the preferred lane over Leclerc and Verstappen goes down to third. Leclerc to second. Perez goes from third to first here in less than a sector. Now as you can see myself focused in P17 right now. Piastri, Sergeant, all pass Hulkenberg. I do get my first warning for exceeding track limits here. Uh, like I said, even though I'm on uh, strict corner cutting, it's it's not hard to not get a penalty. Just don't abuse track limits there. Uh, but I did abuse them a little bit there, obviously, and, and rightfully so. Got my first warning of the night. Lap 7, you can see some battles happening. How about Lance Stroll in the Aston Martin? A car that's fourth in the R&D, but really, really struggling right now. Lance is to move forward while his teammate Fernando Alonso running well up inside the top 10, but the pace just isn't quite there in that Aston Martin this season like it should be in my opinion so far compared to real life but you can see myself catching Stroll off guard there he was having a bit of a tussle right there with Lando Norris who started a little bit further down the order with a grid penalty but we're gonna go around the outside of Lando down towards this final hairpin and we got that uh, slipstream from Pierre Gasly uh, Gasly really falling back as well uh, early on in this Grand Prix as his teammate of Ocon continues to drive away so P14 for Gasly it might be P15 because look at the difference with the DR I looked back briefly to see what Norris was doing. He was bidding, and I forgot just how much of an effect the DRS has in this game, and I nearly drove myself right into the back of Pierre Gasly right there. So, uh, continuing to focus in, but unfortunately, you can see the battle continues. This is Lance Stroll, who got past Pierre Gasly and then drove right past me. My pit window, though, now open after starting on the soft. So, we were coming in. You can see the tire icon actually on there in the bottom right. So, it was certainly time to box for... Uh, these now fresh sets of mediums here now is I need to move this uh, turn in thing up there because it's like in the way in my opinion so I'm going to try and move that up probably in the next episode but it was a decent pit stop here uh, we're going to get back racing here from Jeddah now and we are about halfway through this Grand Prix a little bit uh, cleaner than Bahrain was I'm happier with my pace but we're still struggling on pace definitely uh, out as you can see myself having a moment on the curbs right there I don't know how I don't get a warning for this but we continue on we did lose more time than we gained right there so you can see now Leclerc and Verstappen they are second and third coming into the pits and I can tell you there's a big difference with tire wear this season in F123. Uh, it is uh, undercutting I think is a very good strategy this season uh, for this game now as you can see myself uh, coming through turn one. Now Yuki Sonoda had just pitted and look at that he is barely in front of me 
me now only a couple seconds the difference between himself and I and as well here comes now Sergio Perez so he's gonna pit a lamp later but I think he had enough of a gap to where he'll comfortably stay ahead uh, of everybody that just pitted between Leclerc and, and Verstappen you can see sure enough he would so now focus back on myself yellow flags here actually as we go into sector two it's gonna be for the Alfa Romeo a Valtteri Bontas a mechanical failure right there so he's gonna be pulling off circuit it's gonna be the day over for him uh, he might still be parked on the track so be curious to see if we got a safety car what we do get a virtual safety car cars so we would be slower uh, for of course that one lap usually is about how long that virtual safety car lasts for uh, it was a little bit less this time we would get back rolling though we were two seconds behind our teammate of Yuki Tsunoda we were only half a second ahead of however uh, Joe Guanyu Bontas' teammate there at Alfa Romeo now as Joe is closing in on me and look at this I I once again am struggling uh, in straight line speed at times here and you can see Joe drives past me here comes Lance Stroll I didn't have a whole lot of battery to use and I didn't want to drain it you know at this point in time so they both go past me that puts us down to p14 or p15 that would put us down to actually uh, as Sergio Perez in front here as we go through the grid as you can see Hamilton having a great run currently in p4 great pace out of that Mercedes of Lewis Hamilton so far yeah they look pretty good tonight I'm most shocked by Aston Martin though Fernando only in seventh and Lance all the way down in 14th a tough night for a team we expect more from this year all right Gary do you have any more pace I am pushing as hard as I can dude I will take that as a no then as you hear Owen's radio communications, the defending F2 champion running 15th currently. I've got zero pace, man. And that's Logan Sargent who seems to be struggling as well. Owen is the best rookie running P15, give them some time. It is also key to remember all three rookies aren't in the greatest machinery this year. Let me know what you think. Should we have those commentator AI through the grid, you know, every episode, maybe every other episode kind of deal? Let me know down in the comments what you think on that. Uh, but yeah, focus back in on myself here. We were running P15 right behind the spell of Zhou Guanyu, uh, Lance Stroll as well. And I was, of course, trying to get myself back into uh, this battle here. And we're all over the back now of Zhou and an opportunity. He's on those hards, we're on the mediums, but it didn't seem like that was making a huge difference uh, at this point in the Grand Prix as I'm having to hit over take again because Joe actually fights back here as we head down into turn one giving him the room there that he is entitled to I don't like to close somebody out of a corner because I am a big believer in not accepting the whole f1 thing of it's my corner argument because I think that's just such a weak excuse of a racing driver uh, but we move up into that position but then you saw just how quickly we lost it from Joe uh, passing me back with that DRS and unfortunately I couldn't get back into the DRS range of Joe and Pierre Gasly was finding more pace in that Alpine he was suddenly uh, coming back to the field I don't know if he had a mechanical issue or what but he had certainly found uh, a lot more pace in that Alpine but before we focus in on the battle between him and I you can see the battle right now Leclerc up into second place here comes Lewis Hamilton on the mediums now the two in front of him are on hards he's putting these mediums to work Lewis Hamilton going for it but he gets the short end of the stick there holds on to fourth place and here goes Pierre Gasly now towards the end of lap 21 he's gonna pass me so down uh, to P16 and I didn't really hold him up because I felt like he had enough pace that if I could stay within his DRS we could run down the next group of cars focus back up front Lewis Hamilton again scraping the outside wall even now as he's trying to move up into a podium position passing for Stappen and trying to go around the outside again of Charles Leclerc he's gonna have to back out of it this time but Leclerc is gonna leave him room they continue side by side for Stappen not as much speed as I expected out of him here tonight now as he continues to fight with these guys he has a DRS Leclerc doesn't Lewis Hamilton into second place and I think Leclerc is gonna defend over Verstappen because he's got the preferred lane he'll get the grip and yeah sure enough he's gonna power back through into third place now as we continue uh, to follow Pierre Gasly and my strategy of just following Pierre to the cars in front of us work to perfection now it helped that my team at Ayuka Sonoda was in a tussle right here with Zhou Guan Yu uh, as well as Kevin Magnussen here so that would bring us all together with two laps to go in this Grand Prix and you can see myself going for the overtake right there on Gasly kind of caught him off guard almost looked like he flinched right there and just kind of opened the door for me uh, so we move back up into P15 past Pierre coming to the final lap which is already well underway for Sergio Perez who's well ahead of everybody but here we are in this big tussle into the bank of Kevin Magnussen even right there not what I wanted to do but Sonoda into 12th he's not gonna have the RS and everybody behind him is so here we go to the right side of the circuit now and Joe goes to the uh, right side and now we're gonna split Yuki I think three one as we head down towards turn one I was trying to lunge one up the inside of Joe but then there goes Kevin Magnussen for a move uh, so I had to actually uh 
uh, get back in behind and in line of Joe. So here we are now in P14 again. Yuki now at my left side. I'm going to give him the room because he's my teammate, but I'm going to pay the price of that. We immediately lose traction as I went off circuit there. That's the second Grand Prix in a row to kick off our career where we've had a bit of a moment on the final lap, losing two positions. Sergio Perez comes through to pick up the victory here. That's going to be win number five of his Formula One career. It's a drag race to the line. Hamilton does not get Leclerc. He settles for third place. Verstappen not even on the podium here as the battle continues up here though uh, between myself, Sonoda, as well as Gasly. A bit of a moment right there. Really understeered. And look at this. Piastri gained like three seconds on everybody after this huge battle. And then closing lap. Sonoda holds off Gasly into the final turn. So we're going to lose to our teammate two races in a row. But actually losing to him on track this time and not because of a red flag bug. You see Gasly goes into harvesting right at the line. Not going to be enough though. It's going to be a, I would say, a somewhat disappointing, but at the same time, not P16 here. Uh, it's going to be, well, back-to-back -back P16 finishes to kick off our F1 career. Driver of the day, I don't know how Lance Stroll pulled it off, but he will get driver of the day. Let's head to the podium. A sterling effort from the team and a magnificent drive to secure victory here at the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. Anthony Davidson help them deliver this result, do you think? Well, they certainly stood out as a driver with tons of confidence on the track. I think their ability to keep their cool, even during some of the more hectic parts of the race, meant they were able to capitalize on the mistakes of other drivers, giving them the opportunity to make their way to the top spot with ease. Max Verstappen, uh, you know, just didn't seem to have the pace that he needed here today, uh, or tonight, I should say, under the lights again in Jeddah. Uh, so he, I think, should sacrifice the championship lead as well, Probably to his teammate of Sergio Perez. So just like real life, Verstappen wins in Bahrain, Perez wins in Jeddah. So we'll see uh, who's going to come out on top in Australia. Based off real life, we got to say Max Verstappen here now. As you see Leclerc Hamilton going to celebrate there uh, with the Mexican on the top step of the podium here. Three different countries represented on the podium here today in Jeddah. Awesome to see there uh, as well. You can actually see Nui on the podium, which is great to see. Uh, but how about Lance Stroll? Actually, give him credit. He struggled so early in the race, but he did end up P10, so the Canadian uh, getting a point there as his teammate of Fernando Alonso manages P7, uh, as we are P16 behind our teammate, uh, like I said, of Yuki Sonoda. Not really going to take a huge look at the points, because we're only two Grand Prix of 23. Such a long season. Uh, we see Red Bull atop at the Constructors, 27 ahead of Ferrari, Aston Martin down in fourth place. I'm curious to see if they can find some pace, but that's going to wrap it up for me. We're going to take off from the airport, head to Australia, the land down under, and we'll see what we can do there. I'll see you guys then. Have a great day, everybody.